Welcome back to part four on creating interactive grass. So, so far we have our grass moving in the breeze, as you can see here. We now need to get it to deflect where the sphere is so that as we move this sphere around the environment, the grass kind of like squashes and gets out of its road. So what do we have to do? Well, we're already pushing our vertices around. What we need to consider is where this sphere is. Now, we can feed through values from Unity into our shader to then use with the vertex displacement that we've got going on. And what we're going to do is we're going to take the center point of this sphere and then all of the grass that's kind of near to it we want to push away. So we're going to create a vector from the center of the sphere outwards to each vertex of that grass and actually push it away. Okay, so let's get started. To begin with, we have to go into our C sharp code because it's the code that's going to constantly update the position of our sphere so that we can then pass that through in real time to the shader. So this is how you actually communicate in real time with any shader, as long as you get these steps right. So first of all, we need to grab hold of the public game object, which will be the ball, okay, or sphere. And then we also need to grab hold of the material that we want to affect, which is our grass shader material. Okay, so those are the two things that we need to pass through in the inspector. Now, what's going to happen inside of the update is we're going to keep updating the material with the new position of that sphere, which will be that center point of the sphere. So we're going to go mat dot set vector because the position of the sphere is going to be a vector inside of our material or shader as I'll show you when we put that in. Now it's going to be called underscore trample position because we're trampling the grass and the trample position will be set to ball dot transform dot position. Okay now what's really important in this line of code is this here how you spell it okay notice underscore trample with a t capital t and capital p okay trample position because that's what's going to be looking for in the shader that's all we have to do here now so save that and we're going to pop back into unity now we're going to grab that script which is sitting on our ground plane and what we need to do with it once we find it here Okay, so we need to set the ball to our sphere that's in the environment. So this is that sphere here. We'll just drag and drop that to ball. Then we've got to get our material. Now, material in this case is our grass material, which is sitting over in the assets. So grab hold of that and drag and drop that over to the material. And that's the link for communicating between this script and this particular shader. All right, so let's now go into our grass shader. And what we need to do in here is actually create that trample position over in our blackboard. Okay, so over in the blackboard, let's add in a vector three because that's the position of the ball that is going to come through. Now, remember what it was called? Trample position. But we don't put the underscore in it in the blackboard. So trample position okay spelt exactly the same same capitalization but without the underscore why don't we put the underscore in there okay if you select it and go over to our graph inspector you can see that the name we've got inside of here is trample position but unity puts a reference value with underscore trample position so that's how it's going to find it so Yes, we want underscores when we're passing it through from our script, but not inside here when we name it because Unity will automatically append that. Very important to remember. Now, as well as trample position, we're going to put in a, another couple of values, which are floats. We will want a trample strength, and we want another float, which is going to be the trample size. Now, why have we 
passed these through as floats or will be passing these through as floats. Remember we've got the position of the ball coming through, not actually how big the ball is. So the trample size will give us like how much effect the ball is going to have from around its center point. While you could pass through every single vertex from the sphere into here and then somehow try and affect everything, that's a hell of a lot of processing. What we're doing with a shader is basically trying to fake the effect, not make it absolutely exact. And if you can get away with it with a cheaper way of doing it, then do that, okay? Because we're not about being perfectly exact. And it's much easier if we're just working with one position that's creating a vector to push our vertices away. Right, so let's get to work integrating these values into our shader. The first thing we're going to have to do is work out what the vector is from the center point of the trample position or the center point of our sphere to each vertex. Let me just shut these down to create a little bit more room. Now, what I would recommend as you're doing this is run your scene so that you've got some grass going on. And as you change the shader, it's just going to update in here, which will make life a little bit easier for you. So coming back into our shader, what we need to do is get our world position of our grass relative to our trample position, because that's in world coordinates. So our world position that we're getting is down here. We're already getting it. Now you can add another world position node if you don't have space where you currently are to put the new nodes, but I'm going to just focus down in here because I'm going to put this new node set just above this, okay? Because it's going to kind of fit in here in the logical progression of things. So we're going to take the world position of the vertex and we're going to subtract. Now it's got to be the first value going in, not the B value. So let me just delete that, make sure it's the A value because it's going to be the position minus the trample position, which will give us our vector. So grab your trample position and just bring that into there. Okay, now once you've got that, you've now basically got an out which is the vector away or from the center point to each vertex of each grass model in world space. Now when we trample things we don't want to trample in the y direction okay we're just wanting the grass to move out in the x and the z direction. So I'm going to split that out and make sure that that vector has no Y component whatsoever. So we'll bring it back in and combine it. And that's going to be the R value. Okay, let me just roll that up. We don't need to really see what's going on there. Okay, so we're splitting it. We're going to keep the Z and the X value there. And then what we want to do is figure out where this vector is now going to be added to the offset for our vertices. Now, remember that over here, we are using the UV values to actually make sure that anything at a Y position of zero, which is the base of the graph, doesn't move anything. So this is basically cutting things off to make sure that stuff at the bottom stays put, stuff at the top moves. And you can see that in this ad here, if you have a look at the way this black is swaying back and forward, this point is staying fixed, whereas the rest of it is allowed to move back and forward. So that means that this vector needs to come in before we do this cutting off. So we can actually add it to this point here because this is the last position calculated for a vector before we start cutting things off based on its height. So if we bring this combine and we don't need a four sized vector, we only need a three. Let's bring that down here and we're going to add that to this vector here. Bring this one up to here. Okay, and then that can go through into our multiply. So with that done, let's save it and we'll go back into our scene and have a look when that updates of what we get. Okay, so let's have a look now. It's a bit hard if you don't actually move your camera around a little bit. You can see the grass is 
can you see the grass? See, my grass is leaning away from the ball, okay? So it's got this way and then that way. And you can see it really well if you select the sphere and move it around. Whoop, not the ground plane, the sphere. Let me select it over here. And let's move that. And then as you move it, things are going to change. See, notice that the grass is changing in that way. Now, something I'm noticing here is when I move in the Z direction, that grass doesn't care at all. And that's because remember we did all of our processing on the X direction. So let's just go back into our grass shader. What we need to do is make sure that that X and Z value gets passed through. So where is that happening? It's happening here where our add value finally before it gets combined and sent to the vertex position here is only keeping the X value or the R channel and it's not keeping the Z or the B channel. That's just going through from the basic position. So we don't want that. We want to bring this out and split it and make sure we keep the X value there and keep the Z value that we're calculating down to there. And then we only keeping that Y value static of what it is. Okay, which is basically the height of the grass. So with that done, now just save it, switch back into your scene. All right, so if I select the sphere and hit the W key so I can move it around, you'll see as I move it around, the grass interacts with it. But there's one obvious problem I can see here. Have a look. Actually, might need to go up in the air to be able to see it. Look at the way the grass is kind of lying um, in this direction. Okay, if we zoom in, then you'll be able to see that each sort of part of the grass has been flattened into a plane or almost a plane. Now, this happened before when we were setting X values to zero. Remember that? So this is telling me that the Z values are now somehow being flattened a lot. Okay, so where is that happening? Let's go back into our shader. First of all, oops, we, uh, if I can just focus in on this one. This is where we were splitting and combining values there. Now remember we had to also split values coming out of here to go up into this particular ad so that we were sending through one by one. But we've lost this Z value here. Look, the Z value has just completely disappeared, which means at some point it's going to be uh, inaccurate for what we want. So this split can split out our Y, but it needs to combine this Z value back in so that it can go up into this ad. Okay, so let's put in a combine just in here. Now that's going to be the red to the red value. I'll just scroll that up. And this one will be the blue to the blue and the green can actually stay or the Y value can stay at zero. And then this three sized vector can be fed up into the add instead, which is going to bring our Z value through. Okay, so let's quickly save that. Once again, switch back into the scene. And now we should find that that grass is looking a lot better. Okay, I know it's, it's all still squishing out in every particular direction because what's happening now, if I move this, at least it's reacting correctly, is that this grass over here is getting affected by the ball, which is here. We only want the grass in the close vicinity to be affected. So therefore, we actually have to put some kind of constraints on how far away the grass is from the ball as to whether it's going to be bothered by it. So we will come back and do that in the next tutorial. If you'd like to support our work, like us on YouTube, visit our website holistic3d.com, look for our courses on holistic3dlearn.com or support us on Patreon.